science tells us we need dramatic reductions in our greenhouse emissions to prevent catastrophe. And the government doesn't listen. Over the last is that better? Yes. Keep telling me. <laughs> Over the last few weeks, I've been privileged to be part of the Run for a Safe Climate. And through that, um, I've had the honour of meeting climate scientists um, from across the nation. And I've been listening to them and um, watching them and speaking with them. And um, I can tell you that their stories all herald impending ecosystem collapse. Um, it's really hard to listen to, uh, but I think what's harder is actually looking in their eyes. And these are people who have been working for decades, and they're really deeply sad, and they're scared. And that's what I have to look into, those eyes. Um, I think fear in the eyes of my country's elders, and it really scares me. Their message is clear. Dramatic change is needed now, and as the government continues to fail, we, the people, must be out on the street, calling for change, demanding change. That's what these Woo! scientists are telling us. Yeah. Now, let's take a walk away from the scientists. Let's go to the progressive economists and business community. Um, they're also telling us that they see a huge opportunity in making real change that renewable energy and the countless innovative and new business opportunities that will flow from the community, uh, from, from real change, that these are going to bring gains in economic prosperity, gains in jobs, gains in international competitiveness. Okay, so the science, science is telling us, you know, real change is needed. Progressive business communities are telling us that we'll get more jobs and new income streams if real change is made. But guess what? The government doesn't listen. And now to young people, to me and the people younger than me and the generations that AYCC represents, the generations that are yet to come on our country and into our world. We're our nation's future. Literally, us. We're the future leaders. We're innovators, creative. We're the custodians of the resources of this nation. The government doesn't listen to us either, even though that's our role. And it's so sad because over the last few years, um, we've really tried to make the government listen. And we've tried to be heard. Um, we've really laid out youth um, with a lot of honesty and a lot of, I think, political naivety, a lot of innocence and a lot of hope. We've put that all out in front of the government on the table and the government hasn't listened. So basically, do you guys hear us? Because I hear us. Do you hear us? I hear us. Why doesn't the government hear us? We're the sound of a climate emergency. You can't hear the alarm bells ringing from the climate. We're doing it on the climate's behalf. <laughs> we have aspirations for a safe climate future. And that future is increasingly not 10, 15 years away. It's two years away, three years away. Future generations are increasingly becoming today's generations. Why can't the government hear us? So, at 26, um, I've lived more than half of my life in a drought in Victoria. Um, I personally feel like climate change has slowly, very slowly, then more quickly and faster and faster taken away the things that I love. My beautiful seasons, what is happening to them? And my lakes and my rivers where I swam as a child. And you know what's even worse? Taking away my free spirit. It's taking away my sense of joy. That's what climate change is doing to young people. How are we going to respond? My spirit's not free. I feel bound. I feel a deep sense of obligation, a deep sense of duty to fight, and a deep sense of injustice for all of the things that I put faith into this country for that I'm not seeing happening. Woo.